you look at your mentor, your, you know, your, your, your your boss, your designer, those amazing creative director, and you you just run with their vision. There's this newsstand in Quebec City, um, on one of the main street and the, the main part of town where they would get international magazine just for our little group because we were the only one buying them. So it's the face and ID. And we got those amazing, um, they were runway collection kind of encyclopedia. They were um, Collisioni and the one was Gap Japan. Nothing to do with the brand Gap, just that was the name of the magazine. But that was really our, because there was no other way to get at sort of an entry or into the world of fashion. So we looked we bought those magazine, we devoured them. We were waiting for interview magazine to come out. All those great magazine, the Vogue, all of them. So we were, um, we're very hungry from, at least I was from a very young age. I did my cégep at Collège La Salle, which oh, is- That was the cégep. So I went, okay. I went, yeah. So I went directly to fashion school after high school. So at that point I knew that that could become a career and something I could do. Um, sounds cliche to say, but I felt this is where I belonged, you know. So what did you look like then? What were you wearing? Yeah. What was I wearing? Yeah. That was 1989 uh, when I started at South College. So I was... The one thing I kind of remember is I was looking at a lot of the British labels and of course Gaultier was, you know, he, he's still going on strong in different ways, but that was truly the moment for the great Gaultier, Montana and Mugler were sort of the three, you know, <laughs> the three, the three gods at the time. So I were, I remember wearing a lot of polka dots for some reason really big polka dots now i'm not remembering the polka dots on the runways i have to tell you but i i maybe i forget a lot (laughs) i feel maybe it was more of a london thing kind of boy of london kind of buddy map bigger blazer polka dot suspenders shorts all the time even when it was even in the winter I mean, to a certain point in Montreal, obviously, but for a while, I stretch it as long as we could. After La Salle, you went to England. That's really a big move. Tell me all about it. Why did you decide to try that out? My last year at La Salle College, I won the Smirnoff International Fashion Award. I, I worked hard, but it was, you know, it was also lucky. Uh, <laughs> so I... That took me to London and I wanted to, I had applied for Central St. Martins, but I hadn't heard anything. And this, one of the Smirnoff International Fashion Price was to do a two weeks course at St. Martins in the summer with the great Louise Wilson, who was the course director at the time, um, mentor for life. And she became a dear friend over the years, um, sadly. Um, she passed away a few years ago, but she's the grand dame of, of fashion schools, you know, in, in Europe. Louise met with me that summer when I was doing that sort of two weeks courses. And she's like, OK, you're you're accepted now. You told me a funny story about going to the Paris shows and some of the things you did to get invitations. I think you got to the Galliano, yeah. one particular Galliano already... show that we were both at. <laughs> <laughs> um. Louise would push us to go to the shows. Uh, it was sort of part of our education. She's like, you got to crash shows. You got to see as many shows as you can. She was like, go to Paris. There were a few shows in London. So those were maybe a little bit easier to get in. But she's like, go to Paris. Try to get in as many shows as we you can. And it was a different time. Um, you know, the PR team for companies were a little more lax. So it took a, maybe a little less effort to get in some of the shows, but the big shows like the Galliano, 
the Gaultier, the the Margiela, which I just you know Margiela is the one we adored and looked at at the time. He had just started um, in '89, uh, so we would get one of us would really try to get in, and then politely ask the great editors like yourself or buyers or anybody if we could use their invitation. So they would come back out and then we would distribute them to our friends and then we'd all go back in <laughs> really late when the show started. So they didn't really care at that point. Uh, but also we would try to get an invitation in advance and try to duplicate them <laughs> if we could or like we did the craziest stuff to get into shows, but we did. And, but the one that I remember the most was the Galliano show with Diana Karenina, um, one of his sort of pivotal show at the Louvre in one of the tent. And it was uh, a treasure map um, with burn edges. And we made fake ones, <laughs> dirty paper on the ground, burning the edges, trying to write, like, because we had seen the, the invites going by. And a bunch of us <laughs> made it in their the show. Putting fires out. <laughs> I mean, that was like the yeah. And then we kind of ran in, like pretending. I mean, they probably all knew her kids at school. This is a really tough question, man. The greatest. I know. Hit. I know. You've done a lot of different things. You know, graduating from college and being able to work for Martine Sidbon, which was one of my first jobs in Paris, was amazing. And uh, you know, it was an entry level position. I didn't do really anything remotely design oriented. I, you know, I held the pins and I helped everybody in the studio, but I've learned so much. And it was such a moment for that brand. And then just moving to New York, um, one of my first jobs here was with Michael Kors. And, you know, Michael is, hey, hysterical. So we, you know, he would tell us the best stories. Um, it was a great place to work. And then I, I feel so privileged to have started Mark by Mark Jacobs. I was the second employee hired there um, and wow. be able to, we were backed by LVMH, the brand still is. Um, it was, you know, I was there for almost 10 years. Mark direction for the brand was very specific. It was, he was like, I love how the models look when they come for go seeds. I'm going to say it was the sort of Stella Tenning, Kate Moss, um, Michelle Hicks. There was that kind of late nineties group of girls. Uh, and they looked, they looked really cool because they were kind of some of the first generation of model that really looked at vintage again you you had a, a pretty fancy role at Tor Tory Birch uh I was hired to be their the VP of design uh for apparel um so yeah it was a yeah a, a fan, I don't know if it's fancy but that was uh that was my and that's not the only place that you've been a vice president of design yeah, I was a vice president of design as well for Reed Krakoff um, when he launched his label. We were part of the coach umbrella. I helped um, Reese Witherspoon start our home label called Draper James. Um, and obviously Reese was our muse, but also our whole life. Um, that, that was truly a, a place where it was very clear what we needed what I needed to do, having been hired to be or or first in command on the design side of things. Um, so you kind of have to absorb the lifestyle and what the people represent, what the designers represent as well. So yeah. now you do mentor students in Savannah and then you must just bring all of Frederic to that process. Um, yeah, I bring myself, but also bring, I think, my experience um, based on each student collection. Um, so I bring, obviously, I bring what I like, but I bring, I also Any, bring are, my... Do you, do you cuss at them and do they, they leave in tears and you throw them out of your office? <laughs> no. 
that only Louise Wilson at St. Martin's would do that. <laughs> only, only Louise, I think, in this world of education <laughs> got away with it. And I'm glad she did. Uh, no, I don't do that. I mean, I'm demanding with them. That's why they asked me to come down and help with. Um, it's been a really beautiful experience um, with SCAD in Savannah.